Hello and welcome to my presentation on the Web of Life. This presentation is for the uh, Life Day event. And I'm glad that all of you could be here with me today. Now, one of the most common phrases we hear, one of the first big impressions we get, comes straight from the first movie we saw for Star Wars. And the quote we get is, the Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. This is a response given to Luke Skywalker when asking Obi-Wan Kenobi, what is the Force? You know, we, we have these different interpretations, right? It's mystical, it's God, it's a collection of gods. It's, there are so many different ways of reviewing and understanding this information, right? Personally, I believe it's sort of the front face, it's the, it's the underpinnings of all reality, all life. And we see deities as facets of the Force. Now, this discussion isn't about that. It's not about the Force, and yet it is, right? And it's a, it's a fun little kick in the head where we try to say, or, or when we try to talk about the Force, because it's not, it's kind of like explaining how to breathe without actually saying breathe. You know, it's really, it's something that we intrinsically understand without actually being able to communicate it. Um, I want to say my favorite author, Terry Pratchett, essentially, is like, we're, we're trying to explain the beauties and the mysteries of the universe and all of its splendors in a language designed to tell the other monkeys in the tree where the best fruit is. We don't have the necessary words or thoughts and philosophies to really communicate these things. And so take take everything we say about this sort of with the understanding is that we're, we're kind of, as a species, we, we kind of ham fist our way through these things. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is because the best way to sort of talk about this is through illustrations, because we understand the, what's not being said in the illustration, right? And so let's move beyond the, what is the force? What isn't the force? Let's move on from that. And let's skip to that last sentence. It binds the galaxy together. And we can spend all day talking about we draw from the force. You know, it's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. People have gone on and on about that. Let's talk about the last sentence. It binds the galaxy together. Now, I couldn't get this commercial to play, right? Or uh, play sound. Um, and I'm going to or intentionally mute it as we play this, but I want you to observe what's happening, right? This is an old Liberty Mutual commercial called Pay It Forward from uh, 2010. Cool. And you know, what we're seeing is a series of people seeing others do good things. <laughs> Excuse me. And most of these aren't big events. You know, it's little tiny things, you know, helping an old man get his luggage, ranging all the way to stopping someone from walking out into the middle of the street. And so that's a, you know, it's, it's a fellow commercial and I'll play it again. It's real short. And we're seeing people help each other. Uh, but what I want to point out specifically is that in most cases, or actually in all cases, you're not seeing the people who pass it on. They're not the ones being helped. You know, we're, we're watching someone do something as little as taking a, a bowl down. You know, person A helps person B 
take a bowl down from a top shelf and that makes person C feel good and want to help others, right? Now, I really, really want you to focus on that the commercial wasn't focusing on you doing a good deed. Yes, it was talking about people doing good deeds, right? It wants you to do good deeds, but it wasn't actually focusing on the deed itself. It was focusing on how watching someone else do a good deed can inspire you. It's sort of a nice little tangent, right? And so <clears throat> the reason why this is important is, you know, it's we don't exist in isolation. You know, we, you know, as this ad demonstrates, you know, it, you know, it was that person saw the action. It was never like a story. It wasn't a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. You know, it wasn't someone in a pulpit saying, I heard a story once. No, it was very much that person witnessed an act of goodness, not earth shattering, not major. It wasn't someone handing out $10,000 or anything. It was simple stuff as helping someone. And honestly, it took them all of a few seconds to do. Um, now, ignoring the nonsensical time skip, right? The first lady uh, we saw who stopped the pizza guy, or the guy with the pizza, from walking into traffic, she was at the very end, where she witnessed one of the other characters um, grabbing that suitcase. And that person was driving by when the other lady, you know, grabbed this basketball from going into the road. And she was the cook who watched the guy help the other with the bowl. And that guy, I want to say, was at a truck stop where he saw someone else help a lady bring her baby out, her baby carriage off the bus. And that guy was in a restaurant across the street who watched the lady stop the guy with the pizza from stop stepping out of the traffic, right? It's nonsensical. It's an advert. You know, we, we don't want... We don't really need a lot of science here, right? But the point of this is that if you want to sort of dissect it a little bit, these people are helping each other, and the little tiny actions inspired someone to do an action which, while well, they might not have thought about it, because they did, they might have saved someone's life. Does this mean that every good action will save a life? No. But what this is illustrating is small actions carry on. And it's not the fact of the deed. The lady did not say, oh, I'm going to save a life. Haha, -ha, here's my chance. The lady realized someone was going to walk into traffic and she just stopped them. That person could have been perfectly safe or realized on their own. And that's sort of the thing. It's not about the result. It's about what's happening, why they did that in the first place. Now, we talked about rippling, and most people use the illusion of a pond and a ripple, and I, I, I understand why many people use, you know, you drop a rock in a pond and the ripples spread out. But I think that's a little too simplistic. It, it doesn't pay proper... Uh, service to the idea of our connections. And this is why I want to talk about the spider's web. Looking at this image, we think, oh, it's a spider web. It covers a large area. Anyone who's walked outside through the forest or outside after a few days of not going, you know, that path, walking face first into a spider web, it's like, oh, it's as big as my head. But there's not actually a lot of surface material. All it is is the bunch of strings. That's it. It's not a massive covering. It's not like cloth. It's just strings that have connections to each other. And that's what makes it so important and so powerful for the spider. Because it doesn't need to make a 100% opaque web. It just needs to spread out enough. Now... 
if you tug on any one of these strands, because of the way they're connected, they all move. Right? Now, if you come all the way over here and tug here, all the way over here is going to feel it. And here, and here, and here. And for anyone who doesn't know, the way a spider realizes it's dinner time is something moves in its web. And that's sort of what I want to talk about today is the spider web. Um, imagine this is you. And I mean, honestly, think about it, really. Everyone you meet, whether it is because they are family, lovers, friends, co-workers, even someone you meet randomly in the street. Everyone you meet is a connection. It can be a small one, a tiny one, a little tiny bubble, but it's a connection nonetheless because you're interfacing with them for a short period of time. Going back to this, none of these are big nodes. The biggest node is right here. This is where the density comes in. Out here, it's not so dense. Yeah, you know, this is you. This is family, co-workers, friends, and this is like the pizza guy, right? You know, it's people that you touch, but you're not really in with them for a long time. So, as humans, we have all these wonderful connections. And they make life great, but also complex. You know, it's very much um, you can have family members who are upset you know you know some you know this half of your web is upset at this half this person's upset at this person but is friends with this person so they but because of their shared connection they try to be nice it's all this depth that we have to our relationships and our connections that really sort of make up our social net, our social spider web. And if you notice, again, this person's connection, this person does not directly connect to this person. But if you watch this, this person um, in the orange, just in case you can't see my pointer, um, following the line connects to this person in the green, which then connects to the person in orange. This person in the orange connects to this um, gray, uh, person in the gray bubble with the pink uh, shirt, who connects back to this guy with the teal and the tie, who then connects back to the person in orange. So, despite never knowing this person, this person still is connected to this person here. Why is that important? Well, it's kind of important in the way that we have other webs. We have the food web. Everyone learns about this in school. You know, you have your producers who are eaten by the primary consumers, secondary consumers, then tertiary consumers, then all these guys go back to the decomposers who go back up. It's the, it's the cycle of life, right? The web, food web. Uh, you know, everyone flows somewhere. Ecological shifts happen because, uh, let's say, we remove the secondary consumers, right? And now the primary consumers go hog wild, and now there's too many squirrels. Uh, you know, uh, what did they say? The, uh, the Black Plague, way back when, was so bad because people thought that cats were evil and killed all the cats, which allowed the rat population to explode. Um, because all the primary consumers, their populations are growing because the checks aren't here, or not as many checks, destroy the producers, which then destroy the ecosystem. So, keeping all this in mind, I'll keep these lessons short. 
going all the way over here, looking at your, this is sort of a logistics chain, right? You know, think about how you get your iPhones and all that stuff. You know, it starts way back here. One company wants to make them. And they have to have four or five companies produce components and then manufacture it and then, you know, box it up and then shipping and then a warehouse and then to the stores and then you buy it, right? All these chains are dependent on all of this. If one of these, if this place right here, this one factory shuts down, I mean, everything that follows it shuts down. Because all your iPad, your phone, your computer, even a sandwich you get at McDonald's relies on so many different components to just get at your door. We're talking about the farmers, the, tr the truckers from the farmers to the factories that you know, produce the food, the kitchens. I, there, there's so many different links in these chains. Now, if something happens, it all flows downhill. Okay, enough about food webs, logistics chains. What I'm trying to say is webs are everywhere. Our concepts, our perceptions, our ideas, our government, everything is connected to something else. And that makes everything complex. If you want to look at, you know, United States law, well, why don't we just fund this? Well, how are you going to fund it? Where is the funding coming from? What laws impact that funding? What does this mean? What does this policy mean? There are so many different things that play into the mix that it, it makes everything complicated. And again, you're tugging on the web saying, hey, I want to fund this. Everything else is being impacted. Everything else dictates how your tug goes. So it's, it's really this matter of... You can't really escape being connected. You can't really remove yourself. Because to remove yourself is to die. And even then, even then, you don't get to escape it. So, <laughs> this is why I want to talk about this, is everything is connected to something else. I mean, we see web web design, you know, like a, an actual spider web as a 2D structure, you know, it has length and width and that's about it. But it has depth to it that we don't really realize. Uh, in some countries, the spiders will create entire web networks around trees. And the entire tree is just filled with spiders. And it's a spider colony. Which is terrifying to some people, awesome to others, and I mean, ruins a Sunday picnic. But... That's more like how life is. It's just one giant spider colony where we're all interconnected. All of our webs are connected. And um, it goes up and down, sideways, left and right at an angle. It's, it's a metropolis. And, you know, our legal concepts, our perceptions of the same event, everything is dependent upon something else, including stepping backwards in time. How did you experience this when you were younger? That can change how you um, perceive something today. So, why is all this important? Every action and inaction, every idea and thought, every effort and lack of effort, being present or not present, being emotional or emotionless, being emotive or not, everything sends ripples through the web. Everything. You know, it, you can, everyone has been to a party where someone was missing and you could feel it. Everyone has been to a place where someone was present, you could feel it. Um, everyone has worked on a project and someone has contributed too much effort or not enough. Um, all these different actions and non-actions, all of these ripple through our webs. So, we've talked about spiders, we've talked about story, or we've talked about um, you know, the food chain, logistics chain. So why does this actually matter? What, I keep asking this question. 
And here's where it really hits sort of the pavement for humans. How many times have you heard this? I had a bad day, so I blew up. I, got, I, I was just so angry already that you're... I didn't mean to blow up at you. I, I was just just pent up. I don't have time to listen to you. I, I have to go do this. I, I you know, I, I'm late for a meeting. You know, I have a lot on my plate, so you'll have to do this alone. We, we just don't have enough bandwidth. We don't have enough people to do this. We don't have the resources, so you're not getting your pay raise this year. We hear this, and we like to think of these as structured, segmented, facts of life, but they're not. Life doesn't exist in neatly packaged stories or scenarios. Everything that's happening today was dependent upon what was what happened yesterday. I woke up in my house today because I paid the rent last month, or at the beginning of the month. We have food because I went grocery shopping three days ago. Um, I scheduled too many meetings, so I had too many things to do, and I couldn't help Bob with his project. I woke up late because I stayed up too late, and now I'm rushing, and I don't have time to stop and listen. Everything that we hear, everything we think of, um, and we say, I had a bad day, and I was just angry. I'm not angry at you. It was something else. I didn't mean to blow up. I'm so sorry. That happened because of other things. And now someone else is paying the price for that. Now, it doesn't have to be your fault. It can be someone else's fault. But again, that's the web. Someone else had a bad day and gave it to you. So instead of helping people, someone gave you a, a bad time. And you pass that along. So why is this important? What are you doing that might be impacting others? We're entering the new year. This is the time of year where everyone's like, ah, new year, new me, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And it's all me, 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 me. So what I want to encourage you to do, how will this impact what will I do? What If I do this, how will that impact other people? You know, we, we try to structure, um, we try to structure our time, right? Around work. I know I have to be in bed by this time so I can wake up and get dressed without feeling groggy at work all day. Well, have you done that with other people? Have you tried to help others with the, with how you structure your time. You know, it's, you know, we, we try to put our best foot forward, but do we give ourselves the ability to do so? Um, and that's really why I wanted to talk about this is as, you know, COVID-19 is still going right now with the Omicron variant, we have so you know, it's about to be tax season, you know, we're just getting out of winter, or in winter, specifically, depending on where you are. There's so many things in this world that give you pressure and concern. And there's so much stuff that you want to do. New year, new me, right? And so what I want to do is rem for you to take a moment and remember how your actions ripple out and impact others. I want you to think about, you know, if you choose to go to the gym, will that inconvenience someone else? And not saying that you have to stop going to the gym or change your plans. What I'm doing is I'm asking you to be aware of it. Because only you can tell, only you can meter what's acceptable and what's not. Or who you might have to work with, right? Um, you know, I want to go to, I want to start working out during the day, but unfortunately, um, I accidentally took up the time slot that my partner uses for her gym time. So we had a discussion and I changed my time, the time that I would go to work out and use the gym. So that's, 
sort of how it goes. It's not this grand thing, right? Sometimes we make a mistake and we get corrected. And other times we try to think about it in advance, sort of like, you know, planning for dinner, you know, asking people, when, when are you going to be hungry? When do you have time to eat? And planning dinner so everyone can eat at the same table. Or being aware that you're getting really grumpy and need to take a step back and be away from people for a little bit so you can reassess yourself, finding your balance. We think of balance both as a function of time. You know, am I a little bit left? Am I a little bit right today on my scale? We like to think of it as linear. You know, I'm either, or not linear, but more I'm one thing or the other. We think of it as a blend. I'm a little angry, I'm a little sad. But how does it impact and color our perceptions elsewhere? How, how does this impact other people? And do I need to uh, allow this to impact other people? And that's where you find balance within the web, the, the connections. Because um, you don't exist in a void, you can't. Even if you were to suddenly pass away right now, how people felt about you and the whole this web will suddenly have, all these things will still happen. People will feel sad and they'll spread the sadness or the anger or it'll change how they impact other people. So you can't really escape the idea that you are impacting other people's lives just by existing. And that's something you need to be mindful of. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have victories as well. But just being mindful is the key. Being mindful of how you're interacting, because that will help guide you to knowing when you're overstepping yourself and not presenting the way you want to present. And that goes also for others. When you're aware, you know, what's happening on your friend's web you know maybe they have a bunch of deadlines maybe you could swing by with a cup of coffee for them or you know maybe your child is uh needing a little bit more time there, there's some um and i'll give your family some additional breathing room it's all about understanding where you are but also where other people are just being aware is what you need to be. You're not going to be able to fix everything, but you're going to be able to help A, understand where they're coming from. You know, if they're upset, knowing that they're not upset at you, just what's happening on their side of the fence might help change how you respond or how you understand how they're interacting with you. Understanding um, if they're having um, a really good day, you know, how are you going to interact with them then? Understanding what's happening, being aware allows you to understand what's happening so much more than just sort of gliding on through. Um, and so what I want you to do as we turn into this next year, I want you to try and think how, how are you impacting other people? How are you, how is your web talking on other people you know it's it's as simple as you know we we want to do good deeds but that's not always possible we can't see and we, we don't often get to see the impacts of what we do but by being aware of how we can impact others how we are and our efforts might ripple out that can give us some consideration on if we should or shouldn't do something. And that's my challenge, to be more aware of the web. Um, I want to thank you for listening to this. I want to, I, I hope that the, the, this ripple, this little bit of web pulling I'm doing here resonates somewhere. And I hope that by me giving this presentation, if it helps you become more aware of what's happening on your side of the fence, then I really hope that it ripples out from you as well. 
Um, thank you and have a good day.